how did you start in AFL? What was the was there a connection within the club or or did you interview for the role? What was the original connection? Oh no no that was uh, look look I mean athletics is still the same. You just um, you just offered a coach. You do it for nothing. I did it for nothing for probably three years. Uh, you know, and uh, you probably wouldn't do it now. Uh, so it was like five six days a week going there. You know, reading up everything I could, and, and, and obviously I've been a, a track and field athlete anyway. But, uh, yeah, I did it for nothing. Uh, probably was you know, a huge grounding for me to, 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 to do it. And obviously, you know, I was uh, working with the uh, with athletes that were good enough to compete at national titles, you know, and getting to vote. So the, 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 it, was a, it was the real thing. It was pretty fast stuff. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, that, I mean, it was the 80s, but still in field, uh, you know, my brother-in-law is in his 70s, but he's still coaching at the national level, at the international level, Gus Poplo, and doesn't get a cent for it. Were Essendon ahead of their time because of having track and field guys at the club or were other clubs? Um, yeah, it's a good like question. You. Yeah, 100% we were, yeah. Well, it was interesting. Unfortunately, Matt Barber died recently. Matt was a strength and conditioning coach at the Eagles, in the, and he was a, an elite sprint coach, and, and even when he died, he was still coaching at the highest level sprinting. So he was at West Coast, I was at Essendon, and uh, then Danny Corcoran came to Essendon in 91, I think, and so we, we had three track and field people, because Danny Corcoran's... Uh, uh, you know, had, a, had a track and field background, and he he was uh, became the manager, obviously, but he was the fitness advisor. We were doing it together, and Oscar. So oh, yeah, we we we, de- we definitely uh, I think we're ahead of the curve, yeah. And then um, pretty much right through that whole nineties, and and then even the transition from when I left to join in ninety nine. Did it take you a while, like a season or two, to get to <clears throat> to get buy in with that? doing speed power work? Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't get any buy-in from... I didn't get real buy-in from... More, more from the players. Look, it was part-time. It was AFL 87, 88, 89, but it was not real full-time. Uh, but significantly, there was a guy called David Whedon came to Essendon and he became a big ally within the coaching um, uh, setup. And he's pretty famous. He's done a lot of the skill acquisition stuff. And he, he really pushed with Sheeds that, you know, we've got to do comprehensive speed power, strength training, blah, blah, blah. So, so that was really good. So we started probably a comprehensive speed power strength program in 91 uh, and went basically crazy in 92 with it. We were just lifting as heavy as we could and bounding as hard as we could and sprinting as fast as we could. Uh, we won a premiership in 93, a super explosive team with young kids. Did you have some strong influences to your career during these times um, or, or were you sort of more self-taught and, and educated, you know, reading books? How, how did you sort of develop yourself? Uh, look, I think I was telling somebody a while ago uh, on the different sort of history. <laughs> I was lucky enough to train in Europe twice and I was literally in the training camps where people like, you know, Bondachuk and Peter Sheeney and all the greats of periodization were. I was actually there on the ground with them and training. And yeah, that was the late 70s. And there was an explosion of strength and conditioning in the late 70s in Europe, but from the East German, Russian influence. It was pretty much everything that's done now was done there. Then, uh, not, not the injury prevention side, the actual, you know plyos and, and depth jumping and altitude jumping and all that sort of stuff. So, so I was introduced to everything there by some you know, amazing coaches. I, I paid my own way there to sort of develop as an athlete, but, but obviously the influence that that had. You've worked with a lot of individual world-class athletes as well as successful teams winning, winning premierships. Are there certain traits that you've noticed over your time um, that you start to notice, oh, that, I reckon that kid's going somewhere when you see it? in younger developing athletes? Oh, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, look, it's all individual because some people, uh, again, you know, we go back to programming, which is individualised, which should be individualised. Well, the same with uh, 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 emotional traits and motivational traits that athletes have. It, it's hard to sometimes pinpoint at 14, 15, 16. I, I, I am a big one, though, for... Uh, Waiting, 
you know, this is the odd person that just smacks you in the face at 14, 15, and just amazing. Uh, but uh, I, I do like to wait till 17, 18, 19 to really see how that person uh, copes with life and, and all, all, all those other things.